Okay, hi everybody. We are recording and uh, we have uh, pinned uh, Andy. So Andy will be the only person who will be recorded in the recording. Um, and uh, we're going to ask that you not contact participants outside of the festival. You can message them uh, during the session in huddle. You can private message people. You can chat with them through the sessions. Keep yourself awake and um, you can also uh, uh, you can also post in the Love Abilities Facebook group. You can share your contacts in the Facebook group. Uh, yeah, so some people were a little bit uh, confused about that. Okay, uh, other regulations, sorry. Uh, if you feel that you need emotional support, you can go to email us at support at loveabilities.org. So there are five of us manning this group. Um, this email account and we will get back to you, arrange a time to speak with you. If anything comes up for you that you feel that you would love to um, address it, discuss it with someone, we are happy to support you. So because we are only recording ND, so you can keep your video and audio on or off. Uh, you can keep your video on, but I would suggest you mute yourself until when you uh, need to or want to speak. So yeah, without further ado, uh, Michelle will introduce uh, Andy. Good morning, everybody. Um, if it's morning, um, it's uh, it's Michelle Donald here, the co-chair, um, psychosexual therapist in the UK, and just introducing Andy, Andy Walker. Um, Andy um, is a motivational speaker um, in the UK. Um, I, I've seen some of his UK um, school speaks and he does, he's actually extremely funny and gets everybody involved. Um, and uh, he, um, from what I know, he's not a bad, um, he can chat the women up, let's put it that way, <laughs> which is his, uh, his gender of choice. So I shall pass over to Andy and let him carry on this morning. Thank you, Andy. Thanks, Michelle. Good morning, everyone. Can everyone see me at the moment? Give me yes. a yes and nod. That's fantastic. Yes, so, um, uh, look, good morning, everyone. Thanks for those who are jo have joined us and those who are watching this in the recording. It really is a pleasure to speak to you. I'm going to share the screen a little bit, but I wanted to show um, a little bit, talk a little bit about my disability. I have, for the past 14 years, well, for the past 43 years, I'm 43 now, that's ridiculous. Um, as Michelle uh, rightly said, I've been known as a charmer. Um, I remember being uh, a young chap in my 20s uh, uh, and just thinking, you know, the world's at my feet. I was an uh, athletic guy. I was uh, probably what you call, what they call in the UK, a charmer, charismatic, confident, um, and just the sort of person who, in love, I got plenty of things wrong and I, I, I knew it was really important for me to, to be a giving person and, um, and, to, and to put your best side forward and to be the best version of yourself. When you're talking to, uh, you know, whether it's members of opposite sex or the same sex, whatever your people's preferences, that's, uh, that's obviously fine. But for me, it was ladies. And I remember thinking, you know, I've got the world on my feet. I've met a beautiful lady. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures in a minute. But... Um, I now live my life paralysed uh, entirely from the neck down and I have a chin control wheelchair which is going to help me hopefully guide uh, me, myself through these presentations. And what I want to talk you through is I want to give you some tips and advice but I also want to set the context in terms of talking through my journey, a little bit of life but also of romance and crime. So why crime will hopefully become apparent when I share my slides. So bear with me here. Press play. Give me that. Press play. That's on the bottom. Can everybody see the slides? Give me a nod. Fantastic. So there I am. I was young and slightly attractive once, and um, like I said, it was a, a young lad, really athletic, played lots of sports, and. Um, Oh, so daisies. is. I knew that was going to happen. That's just standard, isn't it? Bear with me, guys. I played lots of sports. I was a bit of an adventurous person. And um, goodness me, just help me move these things about. So, 
Is that any bad on? No, no, no. You just move that screen here. That screen to the right, I'll find it then. Sorry, guys. No worries. This never happened in the practice. This has to happen. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can you bring the slides in, Tom? Can you make, pull the slides down for me, Tom? Just get down. So, Rose, keep going. Next slide. Athletic, adventurous. That's the second biggest bungee. That's my backside. Second biggest bungee jump in the world. Next slide. Uh, it's me doing the bungee jump. Uh, <laughs> now, now, if looks can be deceiving, I look like I'm having a great time there, but I'm absolutely, I won't swear on this, but I'm, I'm a, what we call bricking myself. Uh, there we go. And uh, I'll stop for a second. So, and here I was, basically, I, I, I found myself, I met a girl, uh, I won't mention any names, but I met a girl who for me was the girl of my dreams. And she, as she said, was a girl, uh, I was a guy of her dreams. We'd known each other for a long time. Now she was beautiful, she was a model, but the thing, um, the thing for me wasn't how beautiful she was just on the outside. For me, love's all, all about um, many, many different facets. I just thought she was a wonderful person. We had this fantastic connection and, and we went on this holiday. Here we was in one of the most beautiful beaches. Next slide. And then bang. Uh, yes, next slide. Oh, down, mate. And then bang. Um, I find myself here. Uh, I'm in India. I'm in Goa. And life changed dramatically. Paralyzed from the neck down. Uh, six weeks. Being told that I would never live. That I was on a life support machine. That I'd never breathe independently again. And that I never moved my arms and legs again, and um, and it was really really tough. It was really talking back. It was really really tough for me. Um, I felt a completely different, and it wasn't the fact that I was just disabled. It was the fact that I felt like a different person with the same person. If that made made, made sense. So I think as disabled people, I speak to a lot of disabled people. Uh, I run and uh, I'm involved in a lot of peer groups uh, with people with lots of different abilities, I call it, uh, but living with different uh, disabilities. Here are some of my challenges. So even though um, I think my partner at the time was still telling me that she found me attractive and sexy and all these things, Tom's moved those people to the right so I can see them on screen. Um, I kind of didn't believe her that that was the first thing that I think my relationship with that person changed a little bit. and. The reasons why it changed at the top was because um, my, my body Im images changed. So, so my body images changed and I had a, a lack of mobility. Uh, I'd lost my, my self-confidence and my self-esteem. Um, that probably was a big reason why I split up with my partner at the time. And then I went on this amazing course with a, an amazing charity called Backup. And I realised that You've got to get out there in the game of love. The one thing I'd say about the, the tips and the art of romance is, you know, if you, it, you've got to be in it to win it. If you don't buy a ticket, you're not going to win the lottery. I hate those kind of sayings, but that's reality. And even though we all feel vulnerable and we all feel a little bit lost at times when it comes to love, that in order to meet people, as scary as it is, you've got to get out there. And for me, the dating game was completely different. I didn't, I didn't want to do things personally online, even though I, I have nothing. No problem with that, but that just, it wasn't my choice. I wanted to meet people out and about because I feel for me, face to face is the way that I build up trust and that adds to the way I was skills and qualities. Um, so I had lots of fears and being myself was, was, was really, really difficult. For me, it was also a challenge about adapting and it wasn't just the physical thing, it was also the mental side of things as well. It was also about understanding that people could still find me attractive, uh, attractive, even though I will always think I'm a, uh, not the best looking guy in the world, let's certainly say that. But it was also about adapting how I did things, not just physically or romantically with my partner, but they say two, two's company and three's a crowd. Well, you try, try writing a love letter when you can't use your fingers. So for lots of things that I'm going to explain and show you that I had to choose the right people to support me. So whether that was friends or family or PAs, that was really important. And for me, if 
back in those days, there was nowhere to get help and advice. So, uh, for me, the journey of romance is a little bit about theft. And why do I talk about criminal activity romance? It's because what we're really looking to do, guys and, and ladies, we're looking to steal someone's heart and have our, our stealing as well. But in order to do that for myself, and I think the, the thing I like to say is that a lot of fears and vulnerabilities I had up to the age of 28 when I was able-bodied. So none of this was new stuff, but I'd fallen out of love with myself. And all of a sudden, I'm speaking to people who are living with disabilities and have challenges finding partners of romance, is that um, even though people will say, well, you're fit or you look gorgeous when you're on dates and um, they find themselves unattractive, physically for me, I felt really restrictive. And um, with, with my partners at first, I felt, you know, that um, I couldn't offer the same as somebody else. I lost my confidence. I felt that I couldn't offer anything, not just in terms of, um, in, in terms of the intimacy side of things, but in lots and lots of different areas. And I just felt that when I was on a date with somebody, that they'd find somebody else and that they were second best at first. However, I started to see the qualities and virtues in myself I'm still Andy Walker. I call myself Andy Wack. My nickname's Wack. And, and I think by meeting people and by speaking to people and mentors such as um, people like Michelle and, you know, getting out there in society and, and being confident about myself, I think it's important as individuals that you, you, you see the goodness in yourself and you also allow yourself to allow other people to find yourself. I don't think of any of these things, but I'm, I have been told in the past that I'm funny or passionate or kind. I'm certainly romantic, definitely. And I'm certainly loving. Charismatic, I'll let you guys decide that. And I'm definitely crazy. And, you know, and that's okay. And once I started to build that little bit of inner confidence and, and see the fact that actually this wheelchair and disability situation is pretty cool. I kind of, kind of you know, I'm the proudest man to live with a disability. That really, once I fall in love with myself, what I had to do again was to find a partner in crime. And this is something that I, I, I really want to speak to people about because for me, it's, it, it's not about what other people see in other people. It's not about what we see on, on the TV. These are certainly things that I'm looking for. for uh, I, I know when I found the right person because I'm the sort of person who wants to give so, so much more of my time to think about that person, not in a weird way, but I feel, I feel warm inside. Um, I feel that attraction. Uh, of course, of course, the intimacy side, and I'm not just talking about um, you know being in bed together or you know having sex together, but also that intimacy side of things, the connection, the flirtatiousness, the trust and the comfortableness, and and all these things for me are really really important. And um, and I think for other people, you might it might be different things. And until you find the right person with a disability or otherwise you're never going to find that love and you're not going to feel romantic and want to do the things. Um, so for me, I think it's really important that you've got to be, be yourself. And Martha and I was talking about this. Now, if you're a horrible person who's really not nice to the people that you want to be with, then don't be that person. You know, find a better version of yourself because you're obviously a nice person than that. But for me, um, for me I'm, I, I'm really, really thoughtful. I think it's about being thoughtful and you automatically, when you find the right person, you'll feel that thoughtfulness coming back. I always put my partner as a priority. And when, um, and I feel that coming back, that they put that um, the same way back to me. It's also about when we, when we have disabilities and when we are a bit nervous and vulnerable, and even without disabilities, you've got to be brave. You've got to not just put yourself out there um, in terms of the dating game, but with the physical side of things, You've also got to be cheeky t together and you've got to be adventurous. You know, you've got to find different ways of, for me, in my, in my journey, it was about finding different ways of feeling the same and doing the same thing and to help me feel confident. But also what I realised was it was a two-way thing that my partners had also never been with somebody who was paralysed from the neck down. And uh, so it was also for them to be brave and for them to feel cheeky and confident as well. And it's about having that exploration together and to and to know that you've got to respect each other and, and set the boundaries, C certainly push them, but push them together and work out because for me, there's no point being romantic and 
saying that you're in love if you're not best friends. For me, it's about being best friends forever. And once you've got that, then, you know, life starts to become a lot more fun and adventurous. So let me just take a little drink. Um, I'll take a little story. So with my first partner, and we'd met each other, even though she was from England, we met each other in Thailand four years earlier. And we, we, we were very much the best friends before we got together. And um, when I started to feel really unconfident, and she started to say, look, I fancy you, you need to pull yourself together. I think you're great. You know, it's just, you, you've got to get, you, you need to find a purpose. You need to do something. And really my purpose was to, to see the smile come back on her face. And she loved food and I loved food, but I couldn't cook an egg. I was absolutely useless at cooking. So um, what I started to do, um, um, this lady went back to work and I learned how to cook. And it was really cool because it was a really good way of, Connecting with PAs, where, so my carers and friends and family who come over and help. Um, I love my food, so it, it had a good end result for me as well. But to see that smile on my face when my partner came back and I cooked some of her favourite food at first really badly, and then I got a little bit better at it, was, was amazing. And all of a sudden, what it did, it helped to give me the confidence. She felt loved again, I think, a little bit more, and um, she felt more romantic, and things started to progress in different areas again with us and moved a little bit more naturally but it was a real boost and it was a simple simple thing that I did I felt a little bit more like me again I felt useful again and I started to move that into different areas and I started to feel brave again and you know there's lots of kind of big stuff and things that can help us and uh, would help me and a partner which again it's all about doing things together so there's been loads of amazing sessions on loads of different things with love, uh, lovability that Michelle and Martha have set up. And if you've not seen them, then take a look at the recordings because they're fab. So it's advice on things that can help us and adapt. So it might be uh, toys and aids. It could be ways of adjusting and being adventurous and exploring. And those things can be really, really important to adjust. And um, if you've acquired a disability or you feel that, you, you know, you want to give some of the same feeling as we all see on the movies, which is a load of nonsense because that's not real life. But, you know, um, some of these things can be really, really helpful if you're both feeling comfortable uh, together. It's all about doing things for me together. But it's not just about um, the big things. It's, it's about using what you've got, not what you haven't. It's about adapting. And don't worry about the things, for me, I had to tell myself that you can't do you know, you're a pretty cool guy and you've got lots going on for you. And uh, I was told, and it's about adapting and it's about using every little part of your body, your senses, and just trying to think about loads of things. And I had so much fun working with my partner at times, but also when I wasn't with, uh, with her, or um, just to think about different ways. And it's amazing how just, you know, by looking at someone with your eyes, you can be so flirtatious. The Scent of a Woman, that film's amazing. But for me, I love that film. But as well, I mean, I absolutely love aromas and I find them so attractive. They're a massive turn on for me. But um, there's a lady that I've been chatting up recently and I know that she likes a certain type of aftershave. So I'll make sure that, you know, that, that's the kind of aftershave that I wear when I'm with her or I'll buy that kind of aftershave as a new one. And yeah, I can't use my fingers and I can't use my, my toes and I can't use my hands. So there's lots that I can't do. But it's amazing what I found out that I can do with the, the bits that still move and work. And whether it's head dancing or it's being charming and charismatic and just being trying to chat that, that uh, person up again for me, it's a lady. But the sense of touch and what I've used in my body and the fun that I've had exploring that and being persuasive is absolutely amazing. The voice, of course, I've always already mentioned being a charmer. But it's not just being, it's about being thoughtful and caring and looking into the soul of that person and saying, what really does that person want out of a partner and out of life? And it might be it might be a stud at one moment and someone who's being really sexy or funny. And at other times it's someone who's being kind and considerate and caring. And love is sweet and there's lots of different ways that we can explore each other's bodies and tastes. And I've already said that can be an intimate thing, but it can also be the way that we go for meals or how we cook for each other. And I love all this stuff. I love romance. I love being cheeky and I love surprises. I think, I think it's, it's brilliant. And it's amazing how people think it's like massive gestures. I remember um, I started sort of kind of dating a girl 
who was someone that bought her a car, a bloody house. He was a multi-millionaire. He had a six-pack and all the rest of it. But you know what? He was a really, really uh, crappy boyfriend and a you know a bad human being. And it's amazing how you know with my partners, um, and I'm single at the moment, so I don't want to give too, too much away. Guess the next Mrs. Walker is going to be watching this. I have a live or not a recording, but just simple things like, um, and again, I need support with this kind of stuff. So it's hard enough sometimes putting burying your soul in terms of giving everything. Um, and it's just a one-to-one -one thing, you're doing it yourself, because I was really shy with this, which might sound amazing. But then to ask a PA or a friend to help with love letters or post-it notes is really, really a barrier for me at first. But you've got to be brave and you've got to crack on with it. So little simple things like, you know, your partner coming home and albeit they, in my situation, have to help me a lot physically with stuff. The fact that, you know, people can come home to a, a bath and just a little note and a glass of wine it could be a glass of water teas cut and prepared and just something lovely where i once decorated an entire back of a of this massive room with various post-it notes all in, done in different colors and different handwriting styles i printed a few off it must have been about 900 post-it notes we uh, we were been together for a while uh, we were engaged and i had a key for a house and she had a key for mine so when she was working, she was really stressed. She'd been suffering from lots of stress at work and anxieties and feeling unconfident and not good about herself. So we, we, we left the 900 messages. It took her a full weekend to read and divulge. And, you know, it completely changed her. And it was amazing. It were well, it's flowers. And for me, on the bottom left, what I do is it's not about doing things when you first meet a partner romance and love is something which should be sustainable if you've got your partner in crime of course you're going to have your, your your sort of darker days in love and romance but it's all about reminding yourself why you love each other and and when you've got your partner in crime it's important that it's sustainable so it should be whether it's in 50 years time or five months time or five years time and sometimes i found myself in the past that i've i've let that slip a little bit and so my the other person so I set myself little reminders, you know, every every three or four weeks, make sure you're, you know, Andy TCB, you're taking care of business and looking after the, in my case, a lady. I wanted to share this post because I love this cheekiness here. So this is a little post-it note here. So um, I came on to this one, uh, one day. It was, I'm sorry you've had not so great a day. I just want to remind you that I love you and I'm always here for you. Now enjoy a beer, fantastic and grab my boob when you're ready. And I just think that's really cheeky, really funny, and really simple, you know? Anyway, it's also about uh, the day-to-day -day stuff, like I said before, and I find that, you know, romance isn't sustainable if, you know, you don't do the simple things. I'm not suggesting this is gonna work for everybody, and I can't do this, but I'm really, really busy, and Michelle will tell you that. I run this busy consultancy firm and um, motivational speaking firm, but I always take time out of my day when I'm, particularly with living with a partner, to make sure that we do the tasks that, all, that my partner will appreciate. So it could be shopping, um, decorating, and you know I make sure that I balance that with my PAs with the amount of work that I do as well, um, cleaning, or even putting up the Christmas tree because we get into that season as well. Um, we kind of get into the end of my session a little bit, and um, I wanted to... For, for me, the big thing was uh, the big thing for me was the fact that um, I think me and my partner at the time of the accident, there was lots of real good support around technology in the spinal unit, and there was lots of people at different level of, of injuries, but there wasn't many mentors or help and advice available. It was a real journey for me. I think my first partner suffered from that a little bit. Um, and you know we, we, we still converse um, we're still friends and she's often married and, and stuff and I've been engaged in the past and had different partners but it, it was it was really really tough and you know the whole point I think of what loveability offer through all these amazing sessions and you've not seen them for four days they're available um, recorded and online is the fact that there is a family out there for you to, to talk to and it can be hard but we've got to be brave to do so and um, people will have the same fears and struggles. So embrace that family, the lovability family. It's international, but, lo but, but love is, is very much 
uh, something that's been going, going forever. For those people who don't want to connect necessarily, whether it's verbally or visually or both of those th uh, things that these online forums and Facebook groups that can be used and there's also um, the books and different various uh, points of advice. Um, there's also uh, an amazing disability community, like I said, online. That's my Facebook page, Andy Wack. And you, you're obviously welcome to speak to me. For me, I think it's really important to just reaffirm and establish that feeling vulnerable is also a two-way thing. So if you're a disabled person being romantic or starting a romantic journey of crime with another disabled person that you'll both be feeling vulnerable, but if it's an able-bodied person, that they're also going to have the fears and vulnerabilities too. So it's about once you've found your partner in crime, and I think you'll know that inside, that feeling of warmth and flirtation, like I said before, you'll have your own sort of uh, ticks in the box, if you will. But for me, I think that you'll find your way to um, uh, to have that journey. I put on the top right there that it's really important to talk about it. And it's important to, to acknowledge that, uh, that everyone does have um, things that they're good at and things that they're not so good at. And if you're struggling in the art of love, talk about it, get some advice, get yourself out there because even though, you know, at the age of 28, at the point of my accident, um, you know, I'd had as many failures, probably more failures than I'd had successes in the dating game and chatting ladies up, as charismatic as I thought I probably was. I made plenty of mistakes, but the one little saying that we have in England is, all good things come to those who wait. So never, ever, ever give up, persevere, and you will find your partner in crime. So I'm going to just come out of here, I can I can't see my little thingy, but uh, but I don't know if, if Martha, you can unshare my screen now. But that was really the tips and things that I wanted to give um, to you guys. I hope that's been useful. I don't know if Martha and Michelle want to guide any questions. Press escape. Before I um, I start, has anybody got any questions to Andy? I've been looking in the chat box, there's, there's admiration coming through, <laughs> but not questions as such. People saying how good, how good a talk, how positive you are. And I think, you know, back up as for you, um, they were kind of my starting point as well. You know, getting that confidence. And as you've been talking about, you absolutely need that confidence, don't you? Yeah, I, I, I think for me as well, so back up with a fantastic charity, I went on, so I live in a place called Manchester, for those who aren't from the UK, and uh, the only places we have water is from a tap or in a bottle. And I went on a sailing course, paralysed from neck down, went sailing with my chin. I did independent sailing. Eventually, I did independent sailing. And there was a girl on that course, and uh, she was with a partner, and I was really not thinking about uh, romance at the time. But I could tell that, you know, she, I mean, nothing happened, but I could tell that she just fancied me. You know, it wasn't, there was no suggestion that we'd be together, but that little bit of confidence and that uh, part of being back in the community and not isolating myself from the community. And I mean, we're all in a situation at the moment where we're having to do much more things virtually. But if that's the only way we have to do it, we've got to adapt our mindset. A lot of this is about mindset because my mindset was that nobody would find me attractive and I'd be useless and I'd, what could I give to a relationship? And even though I'm single right now, I'm single for a reason. I'm single because I have chosen not to find the right partner. I know I haven't found the right partner and I don't want second best in love. I want, I want, I want to be with the perfect person for the rest of my life. And that's, and that's what I think it's, it's all about. But yeah, mm. back up was a massive part of it. And just getting out there. And it's really hard, isn't it, at first, uh, guys? And as you say, Andy, I think it's... Um... It is, and I know one of your, your slogans sort of is the, the teamwork, you know, to make the dream work, the team has to work. And actually for you, it's so much about that team and your confidence in how, how long it took, I suppose, to, to get a team together that you can feel confident working with. Um, and that, that's, quite, that's quite special and that takes a lot of work initially for you, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, I don't know if Tom's too shy to hear. Come and say hi, Tom. So this is part of my Hello, team. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, so uh, Tom, it's very much about getting the right, right people around you. And it isn't just people. So when I recruit, I, I always recruit with, with the basis of uh, 
loving mind. So the lady I've been trying my best to chat up for the past four years on and off, but the last sort of six months, I think she I think she loves Tom more than she loves me. Because, you know, but that's lovely, you know, and it's like um, you've got to have the right people around you to do the, uh, the right things. But, I mean, there's lots of stuff that I do. I, I print things off and the rest of it. But, you know, I, I accept my physical limitations, but the limitations of mine, I do think I've, I've become, even though I've always been romantic, I do think I've become a better partner. I think I've become a more conscientious lover in terms of intimacy and stuff like that and maybe less selfish. I think some of that's come with age as well. But it's also, um, and it's not, I, I never felt to, I needed to necessitate it, but I just, I just think that's something where as you kind of learn more, as you, as, you, as you talk to more people, Michelle, and get some advice about what's working, what's not, and um, then I think, yeah, you can get lots of tips and advice. And I'll probably give you rubbish ones, but I hope what's that, what I have given you is the fact that these are the things that have worked for me, and it's important to, to find and explore the things that work for you. And there's no problem getting that off somebody else and stealing that good. Because, I mean, I hope you, if you find any of these tips useful, I mean, we've done all sorts of bits and pieces in terms of romantic stuff. I've decorated an entire room at Christmas. I've literally wrapped a room with, so I've, I've gone and asked, you know, partners, friends for, um, you know, all sorts of pictures of when they were young together and the rest of it. And I've got the perfect settee and chair. And so I've thought about all this, but, and I've given the guys around me plenty of time to do it instead of, you know, supporting me in other areas. But the, the feeling of delight at Christmas when you're not just opening, you know, a present, you're opening a door with a room full of, like, carpets and everything yeah. was wrapped. And I'm talking, like, you know, 500 things were wrapped. It was amazing. Okay, and, um, Andy. Anyway. Andy, there's a question. How, how, how did you... Uh, manage your carers because uh, uh, somebody in the chat saying that they find it challenging to be tough on their uh, carers and uh, take charge. Uh, you know, they, they, they've had experience of being too kind and accommodating, uh, yeah. making sure that the carers are happy and paid, but doesn't meet the needs and hopes. Uh, yeah. You know, when they're firm, then they lose the carers. So how, how uh, I, I know this is not directly related to the session, uh, but do you have any tips about it? Yeah, but not, not yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, it's really important part because if you haven't got the right people, then you're going to struggle. And sustaining curves is really important. So the first thing is, I think like finding the match with the curves is a bit like finding the love match. Really, it's only <laughs> sort of the same aspects of it, and um, it's really hard being assertive. So the first thing is that I mean, set, set some ground rules type of thing, make them fun and friendly, like, you know, like anything else. But make sure, even at the interview, at the point of interviewing, we do lots of like supervision and check-in sessions, just to remind ourselves, not only for me to give messages to the carers, but things that I've said that I'm committed to do, but, you know, as, a, as an employee, as, as a boss. And, um, you know, these, these help and advice on, on assertiveness. I mean, it's really, really hard. I found it hard at first, even though I was such a confident chap, when I was in a bed, paralysed from the neck down, to then have to turn around and not necessarily, I mean, discipline sounds like a harsh word, but to re-educate, to, to, to try and direct goes in certain ways, it clearly we weren't willing to do it at times. And I had to find uh, my voice, my confidence. If people don't have a voice, there's different way of doing it, of being assertive. And, you know, with different disabilities, we'll have different things we have to adapt to. Um, but it's, it's, it's really important and that's something which we can help with coaching and if people really do need help and advice on that, I'm happy to provide one-to-ones on that or guide people into uh, different areas where we can offer help and advice as well uh, around that. But it's about being assertive, but it's also about getting the right team of people. So, you know, don't accept second best in love, but don't accept second best in your, in your support team as well, because that's a really important family. How, how that works for you can be entirely different than mine and Tom's relationship, which is very much a friendship and, and involved. And one of the things when, when I'm with a partner, that I, you know, I want time alone with my partner, my partner wants time alone with me as well. And sometimes we, we're all together as a family, so it, making sure you establish that dynamic can be difficult, but it's really important that you do that to sustain successful relationships with your partners and your PAs as well. I hope that answers a question. I mean, it, it's not easy, by the way, and I've had my challenges. I can't hear you, Michelle. 
There's a question coming through, Andy. Um, thank you so much for sharing your experience, Andy Livstead. Um, I'm wondering where you usually meet people is where you usually meet people. Is it face to face or online? And if online, do you have any tips for do's and don'ts? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, am I allowed to swear a little bit? Don't be an ass. That's my first don't. And uh, don't don't be horrible. Don't be like a, a nasty nasty person. And and don't be be selfish when it comes to um, when it comes to love and romance. Be Try and be a, 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 giving, a giving person. Um, what was the first part of the question, Michelle? Um, where, um, where you meet people. I'm wondering where you usually meet people. Is it face to face or online? It's sad as well. So you can. Um, yeah. So I mean, so for, from my point of view, I mean, it's, I mean, I, I think I, I've I've known plenty of my friends who have met people online and continue to uh, to to find that as a fantastic format for them. That really doesn't, in my situation, it's, I mean, it's, it would not suit me as a personality. So, um, so it's difficult at the moment with the COVID restrictions anyway, but I think just generally, just get, I, I mean, I'm a very face-to-face -face person and uh, an outward going person. So a part of the reason why I chose the job that I do, motivational speaking, is because I wanted to share my story uh, with people. I wanted to help people. And through that, I meet, I meet a lot of people, but I'm just a chatty guy. So I like I like going to uh, pubs. We have in England, we have a fantastic pub culture, uh, 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 nightclubs. But I mean, I've heard people fall in love. I was on a session with a, uh, a pan disability group, and there was a chap there who met his partner. He was 65 years old. Uh, he has learning difficulties. Met his partner in Tesco's. So well done to Tesco's. Of um, supermarkets, but I think the thing is that you know you never know when you're going to meet your partner in crime, uh, and I don't obsess about it. I don't I don't go out with the intention to to meet somebody romantically and, or whatever. I just go out there to, to meet people. I'm interested in people, and I think that's a really good tip. Whether you're dating or you're chatting to people, to be interested in them as well, because if you're not interested in them, then it's not a great start to a relationship. It needs to be a two way thing. I hope I've answered that question. I really do. I'm not sure I have. Thank you. Yeah, we've got we've got nodding. <laughs> um, but, but I, think, I, I think the online thing is, is fantastic as well. And I, I think there's there's certain uh, people that I've been introduced to who are facilitating other sessions, uh, which are well worth looking up. Where these you know these organisations specifically for disabled people online, um, or just generally, um, you know, I think there's a panel discussing whether to, you know, or not, or, or we have Tinder, for example, or I don't know, plenty of fish in the UK, that kind of stuff, whether to expose your disability. I think disability should be something that you're proud of, that you use as, a, as an advantage. It gives us lots of different skills, but I also feel that um, it should, shouldn't be something, it's part of you, and I think it should be something that you should try to embrace if, if possible, even though it brings its challenges. But life brings its challenges. Trust me, I had 28 years of not being disabled, but I had lots of disabilities, I just didn't realise it. And a lot of them are just mental disabilities. You know, the mind restricting you from getting out there. And I, and I think, look, the online thing and dating websites are brilliant if they work for you as well. I just want to make that point. That's really important. We'll just end with, um, we've got a note that says, online is great for introverts, uh, but it's still exhausting weeding out the not so great ones. And I feel for the extroverts at the moment, though, um, obviously with the online side of things. Thank you so much, Andy. Uh, we'll have to draw to a close. So we've got um, we've got Casey Mann coming up next at ten. Was that, was I have right? lost, okay. lost the time at uh, in about 20, 20 minutes. So thank you, Andy. Thank you so so much. We've had um, twenty people um, in the end come to come to say hello and some amazing comments. So if you get the opportunity to read those comments, please scan through them. There's uh, some great feedback. So thank you so, so much for joining us. And obviously people know they can get in touch with you and we've put the details on the chat as well as on the Facebook page. But well done to you guys. Good luck everyone in your search for love. And thanks Martha for, and, and, and Michelle for involving me in this. It's been amazing. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you for coming. Bye guys. Bye. <laughs>